In a moment, we'll get to today's proverb. But first, I want to ask you about um, the last fool that you met and what you thought of them. Um, did you think that they were fun to have around? Bit of a laugh? Or did you think they were a bit reckless? Um, actually, before you paint too detailed a picture of who that fool was, keep in mind that fool in the wisdom literature isn't a reference necessarily to someone's intellect or their silliness. It's actually a moral category. So in Psalm 14, verse 1, the fool says in their heart, there is no God. It's that rejection of God that is the evidence of their foolishness, not that they're stupid. Um, in, in fact, it's actually a spiritual deficiency more than it's an intellectual one ever. So in Proverbs 1, verse 29, since they hated knowledge, they did not choose the fear of the Lord. And remember that the fool is the one that repeats their behaviour, just like dogs that go back and lap up their vomit. Um, fools like what they are and continue in that behaviour. And so the fool that you've encountered in the past that rejects God, in fact, you realise, actually, I've, I've met fools all the time. And what did I think and what should I do in response to them? And it's that question that brings us to today's proverb. Proverbs 17, verse 12. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on their folly. Now picture that for a moment. You've got to imagine a bear. Uh, we're not told what kind of breed the bear is. Maybe we're meant to imagine the Syrian brown bear and certainly not the koala bear. And this bear, we know they're not hibernating, but we don't know much more except the critical piece of information is that it's a mother bear who's got some cubs. And that might be a beautiful image in your mind, but that's not the image of this proverb. This is the image, in fact, that the proverb bears to mind. The terrifying image of encountering a mother bear that's had her cubs robbed from her is terrifying. Because it might be the case that you might come across a bear as you're wandering through the wilderness. And it's more scared of you, apparently. And it might take off before you even see it. But not the mother bear. It's always the case that a mother bear robbed of her cubs will take you out. So this image is in your mind and you're meant to be terrified. What are your chances of survival? They are very, very small. Bears, they, they run faster than you, climb trees better than you, can dig better than you, swim. You're not getting away from a bear and certainly not one that has had its cubs taken from it. In fact, no one in their right mind ever hopes to encounter a bear, especially not one that's full of rage like this bear. And the logical course of action when you encounter a bear like that is to run, flee as fast as you can. But notice that wisdom says that meeting a bear is preferable than a fool that is bent on their folly. And you think, well, that doesn't sound wise at all. How can that possibly be good logic? Because we immediately perceive the danger and the threat that the bear is. But we don't immediately perceive the danger and the threat that the fool is. And Proverbs wants to warn us that fools are very, very dangerous. In fact, they are ultimately deadly. Proverbs 10 verse 23, a fool finds pleasure in wicked schemes. See, it isn't just that they do silly things, recklessness. No, they live without God and they want to live with wickedness defining them. Proverbs 18 verse 6, the lips of the fools bring them strife and their mouths invite a beating. Proverbs 29 11, fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. Well, maybe you could change them. Proverbs 27 verse 22, though you grind a fool in a mortar, grind them like grain with a pestle, you will not remove their folly from them. Try as hard as you will. It's ingrained, embedded deep down, this foolishness. They say in their heart, there is no God. Such is the way of the fool. So what should you do? Well, this proverb says that it's wise to flee the fool and to walk with the wise. Proverbs 13 verse 20 adds this wisdom. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. So, are there fools that you need to flee from? 
people that are a danger and a threat, though you may not perceive them as such, they are hell-bent on leading you away from trusting and obeying God. And maybe one of the fools that we've invited into our lives is actually through the streaming services or through the web pages that we're watching that lead us through a course of insights and intrigue and but they actually take us further and further away from God. What might it look like to distance ourselves and to flee those kinds of fools? Or, or maybe you're the fool. Maybe this proverb is a wake-up call to, to us those that have thought about taking pathways that ignore God, treating him like he's not there, not referencing him in our decisions and taking counsel from his word. Well, this proverb is then a wake up call saying you'd be better off embracing an angry bear than continuing to live like that. Instead, listen to the wisest one who ever walked and the one who invites us to follow him. So Jesus, at the end of his great sermon on the mount, turns to the crowd and talks to them about wisdom and folly and says in Matthew 7 verse 24, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built their house on the rock. This is a call to see folly for what it is, to recognise the fool. And just like we would see the immediate danger of a bear approaching, that we would flee the fool. And with that thought in mind, let's move into today. God bless.